Well, Jane Ace pledged herself to sell 50 tickets for a charity play to be given next month. She doesn't realize she's financially responsible for the tickets she doesn't sell. She was also promised a part in the play. This episode takes place late afternoon in two scenes. The apartment of Mrs. Burnside, head of the ticket committee, and then to the Ace's bungalow. But first to Mrs. Burnside's apartment, who is with Mrs. Crawford, another committee woman. Listen. You mean the only one I'm having any trouble with at all is that Mrs. Ace. Oh, her. Yes. She's making a pest of herself. She's already called up twice today to find out when rehearsals start. Oh, now I told you, Dorothy, you're going to have trouble with a lot of them when they find out the parts you've been promising them are only in the mob scene. Oh, I can handle them. The only thing is that the rest of them aren't as persistent as Mrs. Ace. She's on her way over here now. Oh, really? Well, I couldn't keep her from coming. I tried to tell her over the phone that we'd notify her when rehearsals start. They start tomorrow, don't they? Yes, but all the principal parts are cast. Rehearsals start for them tomorrow. All these other women are going to use in the big party scene don't have to report until probably the last two or three dress rehearsals. But what are you going to tell her when she gets here? Oh, just leave her to me. Has she sold her allotment of tickets so soon? I don't know. Then it doesn't matter. As long as she's pledged herself to sell 50, we should worry. Though she doesn't actually sell, she pays for herself anyhow. Oh, that is a brilliant idea, Dorothy. I've got to hand it to you. Yes, thanks, my dear. It certainly keeps the girls on their toes getting rid of those tickets. Why, last year we were worried to death, remember? Do I? Well, I wasn't going to make the bad showing that committee made last year. Oh, the only thing I'm worried about this year is the reaction of the girls when they find out they're to be in a mob scene. Oh, Sheila, stop saying mob scene. It sounds so plebeian. <laughs> well, after all, that's all it is. It's a beautiful scene. A big party. The girls will have a chance to wear their smartest frocks. They'll dance and they... Oh, I think that's she now. Oh, shall I go? Of course not. Sit down, Sheila. Just leave her to me. No, I hope she doesn't become too bothersome. Well, how do you do, Mrs. Ace? Hello, Mrs. Burnside. Come in, my dear. So glad to see you. Oh, thank you. I'm glad to see you, too. Oh, um, you remember Sheila Crawford? Oh, yes. Hello, Mrs. Crawford. So nice seeing you again, Mrs. Ace. We were just talking about you. I'll bet your ears were burning. I was just saying to Sheila how wonderful it was of you to pledge yourself to sell 50 tickets. Oh, well, uh, that's what I came to see you about. Uh, sit down. Do, my dear. Well, thanks. Um, and now about the tickets. Don't tell me you've sold that whole batch already. Oh, Mrs. Ace, you're a wonder. Well, thanks, but no. Huh? No, I haven't sold the whole batch. I've only sold four. Only four? Yes, I sold those last night to Mr. Ace. He's taking my niece and her husband and his uncle. Uh... Her husband's uncle, I mean. Well, that's a cozy little party. Yes. <laughs> but don't tell me you haven't sold any more. All right. Huh? You said don't tell you? Is uh, that all you sold? Well, I've got two more promised. My girlfriend wants to come with her boyfriend, and if he isn't working that night, I think he'll take two. Well, that makes six. You practically sold. Uh, at least only 44. Only 44? That's just it. If it takes, took me this long to sell six, well, I'm afraid I won't have time to sell the rest of them. Because when I start rehearsing in the play, I'll be so busy that... Oh, the play. Now, don't you worry about that. But I am worried. I want to be good in it. After all, the play's the thing. I shouldn't be worrying about selling tickets. Well, as you like. You know best. After all, you pledged yourself to take 50 tickets. Yes, but I didn't know it would be this much work. So I'll just start working on the play instead. Well, suit yourself, Mrs. Ace. Of course, you realize that 44 tickets means, uh, $132. You understand that, of course. Oh, yes, yes, I know it's a lot. I brought the tickets with me if you want them back. Oh, no, 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 you, you just keep those. Those are yours. All right. You're responsible for them, you know. Oh, I won't lose them. Now, about the play, uh, when do we start rehearsing? Tomorrow, isn't it? Tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Who told you that? Oh, I saw a piece in the paper last night in the society column about the rehearsal starting tomorrow. Oh, oh yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, that. Yes, I see. Uh, what time shall I be there? Uh, well, uh, you see, tomorrow's rehearsal is a sort of preliminary. Now, you really don't have to be there at all, my dear. No, I wouldn't bother tomorrow, Mrs. A. Oh, it's no bother. I'm excited about it. I want to be there. Well, uh, well, of course, if you want to... 
But really, nothing is going to be done tomorrow, particularly. Why don't you just wait till we notify you? Oh, but I want to be there from the start, and I want to get my part so I can study it. Oh, but the part doesn't require it. Please, Sheila, of course she can come if she wants to. Oh, I do want to. Uh, where is it? At the Little Theater, Mrs. A. Oh, the Little Theater. Oh, yes, I know where that is. As I say, tomorrow will be just a sort of an outline of the play. That's all. I could give you a synopsis of it now, if you like, and save you the trouble. Uh, what the play's about? Yes. Oh, I'd like to hear that. Yes, well, now, it's a society drama. It's called The Amazing Mrs. Weatherby. The Amazing? Yes, Mrs. And, and it concerns this Mrs. Weatherby, who is married into a wealthy old society family. Her young husband has these two unmarried sisters. And, of course, they resent this Mrs. Weatherby and her fresh young charm. And they try everything to make her position uncomfortable. Oh, I see. They resent her lavish entertainment. And above all, the friends she invites to their home. Uh, they live, all live in the Weatherby mansion. Uh-huh. Well, consumed by jealousy and the illusion that their brother is being uh, taken for a ride, as they say, that they even go as far as to try to break up this marriage. Oh, aren't they terrible? And they almost succeed, too. They do, huh? But, of course, in a thrilling third act, the brother realizes the charges the sisters brought against his wife were unfounded, and, of course, he begs her forgiveness for having even doubted her. Well, he should. And then, of course, as the curtain falls, we find the two elderly sisters leaving the Weatherby home never to return. Good. Serves them right. Interesting, isn't it, Mrs. A? Oh, marvelous. Um, what part do I play, Mrs. Weatherby? Mrs. Weatherby? Oh, my dear. Uh, what happened? <laughs> well, well, of course, we're having some tryouts for the part. Oh, I see. Well, uh, what time tomorrow? But I just outlined the play to you. You really don't have to show up. Oh, but I want to be there. What time? Uh, well, if you like, we start at 10. Well, 10 o'clock. I'll be there. Oh, I can just picture the part. This lovely woman with everybody around her admiring her, and she's entertaining with parties. Oh, I guess I better be going. We're having spaghetti tonight, and he wants the meat sauce just so. Well, goodbye, Mrs. Burnside. Uh, goodbye, my dear. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow, Mrs. Crawford. Yes, Mrs. A. Goodbye. Uh, I'll be there, Janie, on the spot. Well, did you ever imagine Mrs. Weatherby? <laughs> <laughs> it's a scream, isn't it? But she must be very safe-struck to want to pay over a hundred dollars for tickets herself. Just to the birthday time to this play. I can't figure it out. Well, you're going to have your hands full tomorrow at that rehearsal, Dorothy. I'm beginning to believe your right. Is that you, Jan? No, it's not Jane. Why? Where is she? Well, she's not home. Laura just told me she went out to see the ticket committee this afternoon. Oh, still busy with that, huh? I only got in myself a few minutes ago, and I'm sorry. I hope this thing isn't going to upset our routine here. She ought to be back soon. I wonder if she's serious about actually acting in it. Serious? Class. She was never more so. Well, they wouldn't give her a part, would they? She said they promised her one. Oh, but not sight unseen. I mean, the minute they get a load of her oh, acting... Now, don't start <laughs> that. <laughs> Why don't you let them find that out for themselves? Oh, uh, here she comes now. Is that you? Yes, it's me, Mrs. Weatherby. Oh, it's me, dear. What did she say? <laughs> what did you say, Jane? What? When I asked you who it was just now. I said it was me. Oh, you did. Oh, all right. I. I see something. Oh, okay, right, Jay. Let's not argue now. I'm sorry. Where were you? Oh, I was over at Mrs. Burnside's apartment. Mrs. Crawford was there, too. I told him about the tickets, and I said... Oh, about thought... those tickets, Jane. That reminds me. I've got some good news for you. What? I, I've got some good news for you. Mr. Neff came into the office today, and I told him I bought these four tickets for this affair, and... And I said I wanted to take him and Carl and Betty. Well, what do you think he said? Jane, are you listening to me? Um, what did you say? Well, what's the matter with you? Your mind's a thousand miles away. Yes, I guess it is, dear. Uh, what did you say? Well, I'm trying to say that Mr. Neff wants to give a dinner for Betty and Carl. He hasn't entertained for them since they got back from their honeymoon, so he wants to give a dinner at his home in there. Well, I have a lot of guests there, and he'll take them all over to this charity affair. They're going to be about 30 or 35, I guess, so he'll need a flock of tickets. Maybe he'll take 30 or so. Uh, how's that for drumming up trade for... Uh, what is the matter with you? Oh, I can't stop thinking about that poor Mrs. Weatherby. What? Oh, Mrs. Weatherby, she's a part in the play. Wait till I tell you. 
she marries Mr. Weatherby before the play starts. Now, he has two sisters who live with him in this big, beautiful home. You know, sort of elderly sisters. Yes, sisters. Uh, I don't know what they do. She didn't tell me. But anyhow, the two sisters are jealous of Mrs. Weatherby and the way she spends all his money on parties and clothes and things like that. So they try to do everything they can to make him and Mrs. Weatherby break up, but they can't. And finally, he asks her to forgive him, and the sisters have to leave the house when the curtain comes down. Is that the play? Uh-huh. How does it sound? Well, it sounds quite nauseating. Isn't it so? I can't wait till we start rehearsing. Yes. Now, about the... You're not tickets. going to play the part of Mrs. Weatherby, are you? Well, I'm certainly not going to play one of those old sisters. Well, I didn't know. Well, about these tickets, Can't you Jane? just picture me mm-hmm. in it, Marge? Jane, <laughs> you're steadily stage struck, aren't you? <laughs> I'll say the world I am. I don't know when I've been so excited about anything. Uh, all right, stage struck. Now, how about those tickets? What tickets? What? Well, I'll, well, I'll try just once more. Mr. Neff wants a flock of tickets to take a lot of guests to the play. Now, you can sell him 30 or 40 tickets. Oh, tickets. Oh, I'm not selling tickets anymore. What? I told him I'm too busy thinking about the play. I can't sell tickets in Act 2, can I? Well, there's an obvious answer to that. And you'd better calm down and don't be so excited, stage struck. I'll probably give you some little part. You'll, you'll be a stooge. A stooge? Yes, that's about all they'll give you. Well, I won't take it. I'm not stooge struck. <laughs> oh, you're not, <laughs> uh, And what about Mr. Neff's ticket? I don't know. He can buy them someplace else. Rehearsal starts tomorrow. Well, <laughs> there goes Jane's chance to get rid of those tickets. And when the rehearsal starts tomorrow, Jane's going to be in for more trouble. We learn about that when next we meet the Easy Aces. 